Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Like MRI, and this is a 34-year-old male who had new onset of symptoms, he felt strange feelings in his head, sinus pressure, beginning about one month ago. He thought it was stress-related, and he complained of increasing depression and anxiety, so he went to the doctor with some complaints. He also had some cognitive decline, motor skill decline, memory loss. He felt spaced out and felt like derealization, depersonalization. Uh, for the past couple weeks and had difficulty sleeping. And so again, went to the doctor and they thought he probably just had anxiety and depression, so they gave him some um, antidepressants to try to help. And he said that did help. Um, he's feeling a little bit better, but not completely better. Just out of curiosity, wanted to just make totally sure there's nothing in the brain. But again, they didn't think that he really needed that. So he came in and we do see he has some findings here. So this is a sagittal view. You can see his nose, lips here. This is the same view. Sagittal view where the nose is here, nose is here, and we see fluid is white here, we see fluid is dark here. And in this view, we see a couple findings. Number one, there's a, a fluid collection below the cerebellum. Here's a cerebellum. This is the cerebrum. Well, this fluid collection here is it's probably just benign and incidental. This is either a, a mega cisterna magna, which is a normal fluid collection. The, mega, the cisterna magna is usually a smaller thing. Sometimes it can be really big and uh, like this, and we just call it a Mega cisterna magna, or an arachnoid cyst is a fluid collection that is outside of the brain, doesn't communicate with the ventricles, but it can be back here and it can lift up the cerebellum just like this. That's less likely, but it can look exactly like this. The other thing we notice is um, that the fluid in the ventricles, this is the lateral ventricle, and it goes through this here to the third ventricle, and it comes through this to the fourth ventricle, and then down around through the spinal canal surrounding the brain stem, surrounding the spinal cord here. Well, this fluid is too much. This is too large for age. So this is what we call hydrocephalus. The ventricles are too big. And when you get too big ventricles, sometimes it can be related to a tumor that's compressing or um, obstructing outflow so the fluid can't go through the channels because there's a tumor blocking it. In those cases, the patient will have um, increased pressure in the brain and the ventricles have become too large. In this case, it's all communicating. There's no tumor blocking it. So they call this communicating hydrocephalus or maybe normal pressure hydrocephalus. It's not causing high pressure. And that can be from the arachnoid granulations that resorb fluid from the brain. They clean out the fluid and then your body will make new fluid. Well, if there's an imbalance because these arachnoid granulations that clean the fluid or take it out, um, if they don't do their job, then the fluid will um, be too much. And, and so patients who have certain conditions where they have too many cells, like hemorrhage can clog them up, or you can have an inflammatory condition like an infection or post-infectious etiology, and it will cause the arachnoid granulations to do a poor job, and then the fluid will build up because the fluid is not being resorbed. It's being made correctly, but it's not being resorbed as fast as it needs to be. So this is probably normal pressure hydrocephalus or communicating hydrocephalus related to a problem with those arachnoid granulations not working properly. So that's one thing, but there's one other finding that's even more significant, which is this. There's a speck here, a speck here, a speck here. Lots of specks around the brain. There's one right here, right here. So some of these are very deep. We call them deep periventricular lesions around the ventricles. And several of them are peripheral, too. So if we go over here, we can see one over here that's peripheral. If we go over to the opposite side, we can see a big one over here that's peripheral in the right frontal lobe. Almost looks like a ring appearance. We have a couple of them back over here. And the more we look, we see more. Here's a band of them here, one, two, three, four, here, here, here. So numerous, small, scattered white matter specks. And if we put up this view, we'll be able to see them from a different orientation. Here's another orientation here. And on these views, you can see little white matter specks deep around the ventricles and the dominant lesion here in the right frontal lobe above the eyeball here. So the question is, what are these things? So. You can have multiple sclerosis, demyelination can cause these, but um, he hasn't had any symptoms in his whole life just till recently. You can also have um, what we call acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. It's a, your body will have a, a virus and it'll attack the virus and then it'll also attack your own brain. It has autoantibodies. It will not just kill the virus, but it'll go on to accidentally kill part of your brain. So this may be what we call post-viral demyelination, kind of like MS, but it's related to autoantibodies that had attacked the virus. And I called the patient, talked to him for a little bit to get some history, and he said he did have 
um, COVID in January, and then the symptoms started about six weeks after that or so, uh, six to eight weeks afterwards. So it may be related to post-COVID demyelination, which is pretty rare, and or other nonspecific viral infection could cause that. And a couple other things, you could have Lyme disease, an active infection could cause little white matter specks like this, but he's not been exposed to any ticks um, recently. Never had a tick bite or visited the Northeast, and so it seems a little bit less likely. So it's probably not gonna be Lyme disease, and then again, primary demyelination, multiple sclerosis, though it could look like this, it's a little bit less likely based on the history. And also there's no, sometimes they have these little horizontal bands that come off the ventricles called Dawson's fingers, and we don't see them, so it's not classic for um, multiple sclerosis. So with the history of a viral illness recently, with about the right time period, this may be related to a post-viral demyelination, which we call ADEM. And so he's going to go uh, hopefully see his doctor and get a further workup with maybe some CSF where they take fluid off of spinal cord and evaluate that, and uh, maybe do some other tests. But uh, thank you very much, and have a great day.